Well, here we are, chemistry 1125. This is the fifth pace, and it's going to get real now, all right? The introductory stuff is over. This is where the rubber meets the road. We're going to do some really, this is the kind of stuff you think of, all right, when you think of chemistry. We're going to talk about putting elements together to form compounds. We're going to talk about um, chemical equations and balancing equations. What else does it say we're doing? Oh, stoichiometry, oh my goodness. There's a lot we're gonna do in this pace. I hope you allow a good four weeks. Definitely three weeks. This is not an easy pace, but we are here for you and we're gonna help you get through it. I really was, I was excited. I had my iPad all charged up and I really, really, really wanted to make an iPad video, but then I, I spent an hour looking over this lesson and there's just so much material and I thought, I can just, I can talk to the camera easier, I'm sorry. So we're gonna go through a lesson here. I hope you watch this before you read the pages, pages one through six. Because if you watch this first and kind of get some of these terms in your head, then I think when you read it, it'll make more sense. And I'm telling you what, wow. For some reason, they make this sound harder than it really is. They throw a lot of terminology that is not necessary, <clears throat> in my humble opinion. And they use words and then keep telling you, reminding you this technically is not this and we gotta be careful about that and who cares, okay? We're just high school chemistry students. <laughs> um, some of the details that they cover in the pace you're not going to need to know for the checkup, self-test, pace test. They just throw extra stuff in there. And I want to mention right here off the bat, okay? And if there's any parents or supervisors watching this too, please. It, here on the top of page, <clears throat> page one, uh, no, on page two, it says, um, word to the wise, memorize the names and charges of all these ions. No, no, we're not gonna memorize all those, that's crazy. And then they have a whole bunch more on page three. We don't have to memorize the chart on page three. And then there is a very important chart on page six, and we, do, we are gonna definitely use it. We're gonna become very familiar with a lot of these, but please do not frustrate yourself trying to memorize the entire thing, okay? Um, I think this is reference material that ought, you ought to neatly copy onto a 4x6 card, a 3x5 card, at least table 5-3 is, okay, so that you can use that um, as you're later solving some things in chemistry. But, and you're going to use it for future paces. But to try to cram your mind full of all that, wow, that's, that's kind of hard, okay? That, that being said, let's talk about some terminology here. First of all, an ion. Do you remember what an ion is? An ion is an atom that has gained or lost electrons. So it, most atoms in nature are neutral. They have the same number of electrons as they have protons. But if they were to, let's say, lose an electron, then they have more positive protons than they have electrons now, and so they end up taking on a positive charge. The types of elements that do that, I have my periodic table here, are the elements coming down the left-hand side of the periodic table. Because if they lose one electron, then the shell right below that, remember we talked about that in the previous pace, the shell right below that is full, and so they're happy. So they are very willing to donate one electron, which means most of these elements, in fact, all of these, these metals, these alkali metals, are wanting to become positively charged. They want to get rid of an electron. So they lose electrons, they become positively charged. And so technically they are called cations. Isn't that a weird word? Cations. Looks like cations, doesn't it? And now that's the problem with doing paces as you make up your own pronunciations. <laughs> cations and anions. <clears throat> if you like cats, then you're positive about cats, okay? Or you might think of the T in the middle as being a plus sign. That's another way of remembering it. And then on the other side, we have <clears throat> the types of atoms that 
gain electrons, which means they become negatively charged. So we call those anions. This might be a review for you, okay? And <clears throat> I tell my students to think of this as a negative ion. A negative ion. See the letters A, N. So the N reminds us it's negative. Cations are positive. That's not the biggest, that's not the most important thing that we're going to be doing, right? It, but is, there is a terminology. You will see these terms on the checkups and self-tests, so let's know it. Initially here we're going to talk about just a single atom joining with a single atom and forming a molecule, an ionic molecule, because they're ions that are coming together, okay? So we call these ionic bonds. And if it's just one atom of this type and one atom of this type, then we call it monatomic, okay? Uh, I should say one element. One element plus one element. We might end up with two atoms or something, but that, we'll talk about that. So monatomic means one of each element. Polyatomic we'll get to in a future lesson, and uh, that's just, poly means many, so we'll get to that later, don't worry about that. We're just showing a contrast between these two terms, and to me that's not a big deal, but mono means one, poly means many, atoms, okay, so you can kind of see where they're coming from. So all of these elements over here, these non-metals, especially fluorine, chlorine, bromine, um, they like to gain one electron. So they like to become anions. I have chlorine and bromine listed here, chlorine, bromine. They like to gain one, negative one. And oxygen and sulfur are both in this family right here. They like to gain two electrons, which means they have two more electrons than the protons, so they have a negative two charge. Now, if you look at your, the table on page six, excuse me, go back to page two, <clears throat> this looks like a confusing table. Actually, it's pretty simple. Everything that is a one is basically coming from family one on the periodic table. Everything that's a two are the things coming in family two on the periodic table. Okay? Uh, the negative ones, those are all family seven. Negative twos, those are coming from family six on the periodic table. So when you kind of see that, it makes a little more sense. And then, just a, I'm just going to throw this in here. The Roman numerals, when you have a name with a Roman numeral after it, the Roman numeral is the positive charge. So if it's copper, parentheses, Roman numeral one, that means it's copper with a positive one charge. There could be copper two, Roman numeral two, that means it has a positive two charge. Maybe there's a copper three, I can't remember. Um, there's iron, there's an iron three, there's definitely an iron two here, so iron could have a charge of positive two or positive three. We're not gonna get into why, okay, don't worry about that. It gets confusing. Just know that the Roman numeral is your secret code to know what the charge is. Now let me show you one other secret on your periodic table that hopefully you still have. All right, there's lots of important numbers on here. But under, in the upper right hand corner, Right here, under the atomic mass, is a number. Notice that all of these say one. Notice that all of these say two, okay? So that would be the charge. Come over here, notice that all these say negative one, all right? Oxygen, negative two. Sulfur is, has several possible numbers, but one of them is positive two, okay? And uh, nitrogen has a bunch of different ones, okay? Boron has a three. All right, anyways, that number corresponds often to uh, the numbers that are here. So we don't, we don't have to memorize this whole thing, all right? Um, well, we can refer back to it and use that as we're solving some problems. All right, <clears throat> let's talk about what's called a binary ionic compound. So binary means we're taking two two elements and bringing them together. So real simple, I could take lithium and bring chlorine in next to it, and boom, that is the formula for lithium chloride because I have one positive and one negative, and so they just balance out. You always list the positive one first. <coughs> Excuse me, now I'll tell you, even though this is chlorine, when we put them together, 
the anion, we change the ending to IDE. So then the name becomes lithium chloride. Okay? If I brought lithium in with bromine, because BR is bromine, I would call it lithium bromide. It would just be LIBR. What if I, now here's, let me try this one. <clears throat> Calcium is a positive two, and if I bring bromine in, okay, bromine only has a negative one charge. So I can't, these, these don't balance. We have to have the same charge in order for this molecule to work. So if I have a positive two charge on calcium, I need two of the bromine in order for this molecule to work. I'm gonna get rid of the charge that I have here. I'm gonna write it up above it. All right. So putting the two together, I would have calcium and then Br with a subscript of two. And so that means two, two atoms of bromine bond with one calcium, in that ratio, that recipe if you want to call it that, and the name would be calcium bromide. All right, does that make sense? Calcium bromide. Um, <clears throat> what if I did iron <clears throat> with chlorine? So I'm going to do the iron two, so Fe2. And if I bring chlorine in, Chlorine is only negative one. The iron is positive two. So again, for this molecule to work, I need a two there. On your chart, you see that there is such a thing as iron, Roman numeral three, which means it has a positive three charge. So for that molecule to work, I would have to have FeCl three. So that three times the negative one, because chlorine is always negative one, yay, will bond with <clears throat> this Iron, iron is Fe, ferrous, I think is um, positive three, three negative ones, it works, okay? So here's the cool thing. You can take basically any positive charge from over here, any of these monatomic cations, okay? All these big words. Start throwing these around at supper and impress your dad, all right? Say, Dad, listen to this, all this stuff I'm learning about and my chemistry paces. <clears throat> we could take any of these positive cations and put it with a negative anion, and all we have to do is figure out the, the subscripts. All right, so let me try another one here. Let's say I have lithium and nitride, okay? <clears throat> so lithium is positive one, and then the nitride, it says, <clears throat> is negative three. So in a case like that, I actually need three of the lithium to bond with the one nitrogen. So I need a subscript right in the middle there, Li3N. <clears throat> now the total positive charge balances the total negative charge. All right. On page three, read it, but don't spend a lot of time. Don't get, don't get freaked out about page three. There's a lot on there about the Roman numerals versus an old system. And I'm telling you, these paces were written in 1995. Okay, that was a long time ago. <laughs> I mean, as I'm recording this, that was 25, 26 years ago. That was a long time ago. And I don't think anybody uses the system, the old system that they refer to here. I guess it's good to be familiar with it, but you're not going to have to do anything with it and memorize it. You're going to stick with what they call the stock system, which uses the Roman numerals. And that actually, like I said, that's the key, because that Roman numeral tells you exactly what the positive charge is. All right. Um, I'm going to stop there for now and do um, a video about the polyatomic ions and cover a couple other points during these pages one through six and then you should be done with this section.